Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to CF 2.0 Geek Out. This is... I'm Susan. Hi, Andrea. Andrea. That's Dan over here. Dan <laughs> Haney's joining us again today um, because we're going to keep... We're going to dive further into Russell Brunson's Funnel Hub, which we started looking at last week. So if you missed that, you can go watch that. We focused <laughs> on some things we noticed some features that are going to be 2.0 specific and today we're going to talk about the content hub that is linked on russell's funnel hub so dan when you're ready you can share your screen going um, into the the much heated controversy of will it will it actually replace wordpress for all the wordpress lovers <laughs> out there will it will it blend that's, dun, what we're dun, dun. Right here. that's the question yeah. right like all the wordpress users are like well can i blog on it yeah exactly <laughs> no not right now you can't but you will soon with 2.0 so um yeah so we were just noticing trying to get back to the home page yeah you're good uh on i noticed on the content hub so when you click on it um it's not just going straight to a blog it is going to where you can choose what like and it's it's a hub he's calling it a content hub yep. it is okay choose how you want to consume this information basically is we have options we have here subscribe <coughs> to my podcast subscribe to the blog or subscribe to the vlog which is the youtube channel right my am, am i right on that Good question i don't know i don't know what the, <laughs> well, the vlog, or is it hosted it out, yeah. in 2.0 maybe see where it takes which us is to. which is right because like russell's always you yeah. either are writing about it your it's audio or it's video right like those are the three content routes that he chooses yeah, yeah. so yeah. it looks like they're hosted on youtube right now and just well yeah so the vlog so clicking on the ben, vlog here pointed. it took me to another page here it's videos and you can see videos up here in the uh in the url and then we got our different channels, so documentaries, et cetera. Let's go to, what, what do we want here? Marketing quickie show. I've never seen that one. Which so. is really interesting, right? This is, to me, this is a really interesting strategic play because Russell's not at the point where he needs to like, I mean, he has, he has his whole a funnel flicks thing, right? Like his own, like his own version of Netflix. And so it's interesting to me at the top of that blog that he highlighted the YouTube channel for people to go to, but he's still keeping people in his world here with his funnel flick stuff, um, which is strategically, I think, an interesting, I'd love to have been in that conversation, especially as he's trying to like reach the masses, right? It would be a better play to go to YouTube than to keep them in his world, but I don't know, it's interesting. So, sorry, I was distracted. Shout out to Ben Moot, he's watching. Yeah. I was distracted replying to him. Um, mm -hmm. So when you do click on those channels, where is it taking you to? Well, right now it's taking me to where they don't have content. Yet. Okay, so, so they're not quite. I mean, obviously, as we know, they're still building all this. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stuff in here that was not in here last week. And in the code, there's a bunch of stuff that was not in here last week. So as we've been saying every single week, they're continuing to work on this, continuing to build it out before they give it to all of us. And an example of this this week, uh, Andrea and I were building a membership site and what I'm doing is I have my own version of the membership site in my ClickFunnels account. I build out the entire thing, and then I share it over to Andrea to put it into the customer's account. Well, I keep an exact duplicate of those two at all times. So when Andrea comes along, which she does every two minutes and says, can you fix this or change this or write different code for this? I do it in my account. And then when I know it's working, I take that code and I put it into the customer's account. And that's exactly the same thing that ClickFunnels is facing right now is that they can't release everything out into the wild, out to the public, because they're going to have to have two versions of it. Mm -hmm. And so then in order to get this version that's in the customer's face over here, working like the one over here where you made the fixes, you got to move it over. And, and it's just a lot more work for them than to just, just keep it away from us until it's really close to ready to go. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah um okay so the vlog buttons are not though, connected sorry, go ahead just, so go ahead Andrea. Just before we go um so i but what this tells me the fact that they redirected into internally what this tells me is that there's going to be probably some kind of indexing system on videos like there is indexing on blog content right which is really interesting to me because we have this ongoing issue 
whenever we build a membership area that's supposed to be for what I call the reference library, right? Where these are really good for continuity or really good as a lead gen technique where like, here's a bunch of my stuff, but then there's no clear path to mastery because it's like somebody coming into a, a library, they have their own keyword that they're coming in and they have to find something. And the search feature in ClickFunnels sucks. Like it's horrible, right? And so what's so fascinating to me and, and I would love to like, dive deeper into how much we can use this indexing functionality. And Dan, I don't know if you can read the tea leaves of the code to see, but this indexing capability could be a game changer on, like we've tried Searchy, right? As like our backup to try to index video content. Um, and that didn't solve like the text content. But anyway, so the indexing capability could be a game changer on the reference library learning experience in my mind. Yeah. That's good. Well, what good I see it as is, is with all the internal linking here, as we had talked about before, about building silos and old style WordPress sites and all that, is that's exactly what they're doing here, is now everything that, that this, so guides or the blog or whatever, anything this links to, is then we're creating all this internal linking. Mm -hmm. And that's why, so you, you click on, so we clicked on blog up here, let's try something else, let's try a podcast, let's see where this takes us to. And so we click on this and then we come here and we have four different podcasts. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to click on this again. And so again, we're creating all this, these internal links inside of here of all this content connecting together. And then that again is really good for SEO is all that internal linking because obviously the spiders come in here and they read this content right here mm -hmm. and they know what's in the video, especially if it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you don't think that they're not putting that all together. Of course they are. Mm -hmm. And so again, from an SEO play, that definitely uh, helps. Yeah. So let's see where this one takes us to. So like I said, at this point here, they built up none of this stuff I don't think existed last week. So they're yeah. getting this built out. They just haven't got the next step built out yet where they got all the content in here yet. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. So that was the, oh, okay. So we're back to the content hub page. Mm -hmm. And then we've just, we've got the options of how to, like, how do you want to consume this content? And then below that, we're looking at recent posts. And this is going to be, um, are we seeing blog posts right here? Yeah, these all should be these blog, are just blog posts. posts. Me, me, uh... It's interesting because the first on the right column there, before you clicked, the first section on the right columns yeah it's that that menu is podcast blog categories funnelhacker.tv so that's why i was questioning it i was like it says recent posts and the first thing on that menu is podcast so i was a little bit like yeah. eh, is this blog post so it's yeah keep it's, it in mind when you're you when you're designing your <laughs> menu look at, look at that what do you think the oh. emoticons okay yeah. so yeah. Um, so interestingly, first of all, they're using a six point Likert scale, which is actually not good. So anybody on the, <laughs> on the ClickFunnels UX team, like let's talk because six point a, scales is not what you want. There's a lot of um, options there to choose well, from. Is that what you're and, talking and, about? And I mean, basically they're forcing a dichotomy, right? So like it's yes, no, but I mean, so originally the emoticon came from actually Microsoft uh, user experience world. They were the first ones I think that like put on, hey, can we just get a single question in context to in order to get reliable data on the user experience? And they started using this and playing around with this emoticon, but it was only three. There was three choices, right? Having six choices is not recommended. Um, a six-point Likert scale is not recommended when you're doing social science research, but um, the at a minimum, like, it, so, but aside from the practice, the fact that they're there is super interesting to me that also opens up the door in terms of, so like, I have a lot of systems where we're trying to decipher user experience, right? So if somebody is actually on my blog and able to give me feedback, like if you guys use Hotjar, for instance, right? There's the intercept feedback mechanism where you can pop something up inside of a, a user experience flow in order to get feedback in that moment in order to troubleshoot, right? So what's so interesting to me again is like, what's the extent to which we can use this feature and what does the data look on the back end for us to improve experience? Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I, it's interesting to me that yeah. this feature is there. It's it cool opens up potentially a world of possibilities. It's cool to see that. And then obviously, I mean, we can see right in front of us that the uh, it's it's they're using discus. Is that mm -hmm. how you say that? Discus. And then so we've got uh, the option to have 
basically a forum underneath of your blog. We've got a, a discussion area where you're just connected to your your account and you see Dan Havy's name on there. It's already well, you're already logged in somewhere. So you're you've got oh, you've got a whole menu to play with yeah. <laughs> your profile. So that's the discus, though. But I have a question. Susan. Or discuss. Am I saying I'm saying that discuss, wrong? It's discuss. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Like, I know that's not right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's discuss. But OK, so here's here's the thing that this boils up for me. So all of the service providers that may be listening to this and wanting to get on the ClickFunnels bandwagon, this is opens up a nightmare for community management, right? Because now it's like, you're going to have multiple comments across multiple blogs. You could in discuss, I'm sure go and look at the cumulative area of it, but you need somebody then, I mean, to me, in order to open this up, it's like, you need somebody to manage it yeah. or they need to give us some intelligent AI triggers you know what I mean? And I don't know enough about discuss maybe that's already in the platform, but, and then it's like, is that a separate bill that we have to pay like an add on bill or is that out of the box with funnels? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting points. Dan. I have no idea. <laughs> I, mean, I know you don't have the answer to that, but any I've thoughts never used on discus what we're before, seeing so, so far? <laughs> um, well, the other thing on this page is, um, so we have the video at the top and uh, of course this then creates a link to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have what appears to be, well, it says the answer. So oh, this is ask Russell anything. So up here, they got a, they got a question. And then down here at the bottom, they have the answer. So you got all the text in there mm -hmm. as well. So again, we're getting closer to what a blog would be because we have all the internal linking. We have all the text in there. We have everything that is needed for Google spiders to be able to come and read all this content. So, and again, that's always the problem with a, you know, like an opt-in page and click funnels. People are like, well, how come this isn't getting indexed? Well, there's no text on the page. Right. There's no links to the page. There's no nothing. There's no internal linking. There's no external linking really, except to the next page in your funnel. And there's no text on the page. So there's yeah. nothing to be indexed. Here, yeah. we're going to have pages and pages and hundreds and hundreds um, of bits of content and that all can be indexed now, just like a blog. And like I said, in last week's show, the only thing that makes WordPress different than regular websites is the WP loop. And all that does is it tells on your homepage, it tells it which order you want your blogs listed in. Otherwise, they're pages just like these are pages. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Dan. Yeah. Okay. So I love that ClickFunnels is doing this. And I also really, it throws me into a little bit of a strategic dilemma. And the dilemma is this, I still hold true. And I know I sound like I'm on my soapbox again. I still hold true that from a pure SEO play, putting your blog content on medium has a better chance of viewership with 10 million new users every single month and them doing everything they can to get your stuff in front of eyeballs versus a solo team of one SEO in a WordPress site. But now, and part of my strategy on that is that if you're using a ClickFunnels strategy, then a medium embed is better. But now ClickFunnels has really just muddied the water on my, my messaging, you know what I mean? In terms of like, well, they, you do have a blog and you can do it and it will increase your SEO towards your ClickFunnels potentially. But I still think that the medium SEO play is better. Now you can well, always do a- My only question would be, my question would be in medium, can you put links to your ClickFunnels site? You Even better than that, they actually allow you to do a conical link for the uh, place of origin. So like you could publish it here and then also publish it in medium. The only downside of that is that public um, magazines and publication collections in medium are less likely to pick up your article if it's originally posted somewhere else. Well, then you could originally post it on medium and then post and, it here. Yeah. And just post it in both places. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why not? And if you can, so, so you got medium and you're saying there's a lot more eyeballs, a lot more traffic, Google, <clears throat> Google already knows them, loves them, um, yeah. you know, spiders them all day long. So put your content there with links back here. You yeah. can link it to the article here. You can link it to your homepage. You can link it to your book selling page, you know, whatever. If you're talking about a specific product, you can link it straight to your funnel. If, yeah. if they allow for links, send yeah. them wherever you want. 
Because then again, if you put all this stuff into medium, and so you got basically the same content, the same words in your medium post as on here, and you put a link in there, which again, keyword rich link, put that in there pointing back to this article or pointing back to your blog. Again, Google is going to associate all those, those key phrases in that medium article with whatever you're pointing to. Got it. So to summarize, what I'm hearing is medium is still your primary source. That is the conical link, the original origin, but then you caught all of the stuff that you put in medium. You also put in here with links from medium back into like the parent relationship inside yeah. the blog. Yeah, I would, I would, if, if you believe, and I, I think it's probably true that medium is going to get a lot more traffic, especially immediately. Yeah. I mean, you're, we're not, we're not Russell. We're not Brunson. Russell Brunson. Nobody. Yeah. Right. So, um, with uh with medium you're going to get more eyeballs just purely because as you say they're promoting it for you right. and there's already people going there and it's already being spidered so just uh yeah put your link there over to here wherever you want into here or like i said even just point it to your uh your opt-in page on your funnel okay all right do Scott, you I, I have a follow-up question for for andrea or dan um <clears throat> Do you think it matters on what the intent of your blog is? And I say this just I don't I don't have an answer to this. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to think this through. So like, OK, if I'm going into making a blog with the intent of like, OK, I want to tackle SEO, I want to go and get organic traffic using my blog. That's my intent. And I hear like, OK, so if, if that's my intent, then Medium would probably be the best place to start for that. If I'm like, uh, I don't really care about the strategy of SEO and organic traffic. I just want to like put content on here as an, like another place for my customers to like come and consume some stuff from me or my, my warm audience to come and consume stuff from me. That's not with, I'm not having like the strategy of going out and getting organic traffic and, and using SEO, but would it still be worth my time? If I'm putting the effort into doing that anyway, then I might as well use the best way to get organic traffic. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if I'm going to be doing it anyway, even if it's not my full purpose of doing it, would it right. be what, like, is there ever a time when you'd be like, okay, just use the click funnels one. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I could think of is like, just like you said, Susan, if you have a different tra traffic strategy and it's not dependent upon the content that you're creating for your blog and which then any SEO boost would help, right? Mm -hmm. Then, and it's maybe like in a case where it's really just to establish authority, or maybe it's really just articles for paying members, you know? So like, and if somebody just happens to stumble upon it, great, you know? So yeah, to your point, I think it's, I think the main reason why the medium comes into play is if you are heavy trying to boost awareness through organic methods that's where it comes in can we just highlight what you just said uh content for paying members like that i was just like oh my gosh like that's such a great idea if you have a if you have a membership and you've been putting stuff into a membership area but some of what you're giving them is more suited for a blog style than a membership area. Like you could totally have a private paying members only blog. That Hopefully that's what I mean. Like, yeah. so that to me is like a reference library, right? It doesn't matter if it's a, a blog or a vlog or whatever, right? It's like the ability to index content in a contained, in a contained area that is a pay to play, right? Right now, yeah. click funnels doesn't offer that, but if the technology is there, here in order to index your content why not put it behind a, a paid wall you yeah. know what i mean inside a membership area and now you have a legit reference library learning experience or whatever you want to call it but yeah it's the yes. indexability yeah. yeah so not just if a free um out there in the public eye you know how we th think of blogs uh, linked on your website or your funnel hub, but actually like the ability to drop our blog into a membership area because yes. membership areas are just pages. So why not? Like, yeah, that right, could Dan, be tell possible. Us crazy. <laughs> yeah. Or did tell us. Well, how many I don't, you? I don't know if you're going to be able to put the blog stuff necessarily in a membership area, but we'll, you know, we'll see that when it comes along. But 
if I recall when they originally started talking about the blogs and some of the original stuff I saw, there was the ability to have people have to log in in order to see the content. So they were originally thinking, I do believe, about creating content that was protected. Now, this is not a new concept. No. I originally saw this <laughs> 10 plus years ago. Wishlist member did this. Oh, yeah. And it, that was a WordPress uh, plugin then. And you could not only take certain blog posts or any content, pages, whatever, and make them members only, paid members only, but you could do it at like halfway down through the middle of a post. You could put in uh, a tag there, or whatever, I mean, short code in there that would say, okay, everything below this is for paid members only. Mm -hmm. And so then if you weren't a paid member, there was a box there. If you weren't logged in, box would pop up, say, log in, go here, buy it, whatever it would say. So that technology has been around for a very long time. And if you guys don't know, Stu McLaren was one of the founding members yeah. of Wishlist Member. Yeah. And, you know, Russell and <clears throat> Stu and David, you know, they're pretty good. good. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, plus, I mean, like I said, it's 10 year old technology. So mm -hmm. can they put it in here? Yeah, without a doubt. Will they? Who knows? Uh, right. We'll see. But that would be cool again, to have the same ability on blog posts or even partial parts of blog posts that um, we would have inside of a membership area. Mm -hmm. I mean, just about every blog I go to now is got some sort of paywall <clears throat> and you can read like the first paragraph. And then after that, it says, oh yeah, the rest of this is for members only. So um, yeah, I mean, it, it's certainly, it's very doable. Cool. That's awesome. I love it. That, that to me is like a game changer. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. Now, now, the other thing, Andrea, as we were talking about this, I started thinking, because, uh, you know, we're talking about internal linking and, and all that and putting other stuff. So think in terms of you want to put your Instagram feed in here. What about using something like Elf Sites on top of that, putting the Elf Sites in here on either a page or even embedding it right into a post? Yeah. I mean I that goes that's what I'm thinking right elf sites that's the name was the name yeah of the elf right? sites yeah beads. yeah okay. so if you don't know what elf site is that's the one where there's just all kinds of different ways like it's integrations basically right mm -hmm. to, for little your widgets. websites and stuff yeah little widgets yeah um oh, I was just gonna I was just thinking like how you know how Facebook works in that their entire goal is to get people to open up Facebook and keep people on Facebook. <laughs> they don't want people leaving, right? That they want them there. They want them on there all day long. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a one stop place for ever, for people to consume all your content is what that could turn into Dan of like embedding your social media into your funnel hub or your content hub. And it's like, People just have to remember to go to one place if they want to look for what you're up to. Yeah. Right. And then they can dive in other places. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically it was an old school RSS feed is what it really is. Yeah. And yeah. so you would, you put in this widget and <laughs> so you'd have your screen and let's say you, you had it hooked up to your Instagram, you could have it hooked up to your, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, your YouTube, you know, anything you want. And then you can just scroll through all the different videos and you click on it and the video plays right there in the page. It doesn't take you that's, away, does it? No, that's recall. the one difference with L sites. It does take you to the platform. It it does take you all there. that functionality you just said it has, except for when you actually click on it, it doesn't pop up in page. It redirects the platform. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> but who knows? I haven't looked at it for a year, so I don't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it would yeah. be nice if it could play right on the page, but I don't, but that would involve having a video player there and, a lot of other stuff so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay i know you're on yeah well, sorry <laughs> and so right now we see like they're still they're still embedding videos from youtube onto these pages but we know that they have plans to have their the video hosting within 2.0 mm -hmm. and that's been one of the one of the big things about youtube a lot of people use youtube because it's free you don't have to pay for it but you do have the like I don't know if you could can you click on his video that he had up there um I know one of the big problems is that like at the end I don't know if you can turn it off at the end of the video can you just skip to like the very end of the video I yeah. did find a way with a client that you could but it it's not like this thing always happens yeah yeah and you, it kind well, of distracts you can turn, them you can turn from this what... off too I'm pretty sure okay 
Um, because either it, now, how, it, but you can look it up. It's either more videos from that person, or it's right. like more videos from YouTube that it's are not even the same person. Yeah, like it's their choice. Mm. Yeah, and it's just a distraction. So that was kind of one of the things I was thinking of is when we have the ability to just host directly in to 2.0, then that becomes no longer an issue. And then you basically have people right there consuming your content and not getting distracted by whatever else they're seeing getting advertised to them. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing here I'm, I'm seeing is... Uh... Yeah, you can't control there, it. There's no controls on here. They have, they so turn I was going to fast forward to the end to see what <laughs> yeah. happened, but there's no controls on here. So, uh, but again, I think, and I, it's been a while since I looked at this, but I, I'm pretty sure in that little snippet of, of code you can get from Click from, or from uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. it will turn off uh, okay. the controls. I haven't looked at it close enough, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to I look at that again. Yeah. Do we have, do, I'm curious on if you go to his uh, funnel flicks videos, are they using any of the new video interaction technology from the companies they acquired? Funnel flicks videos. Where did you see that? Down below. Oh, uh, if you go back to the, the hub. Um, here, let me. I am on the hub. Uh, I'm sorry. Go back to the content hub main page. This is the, yeah, this is the, is it on the vlog? Oh, um, yes. Vlog. Or, Thank you. Okay. Do you want you want me to go to the vlog here? Is that what you say? Yes. Subscribe to vlog? Yeah, I think so. Or yeah. subscribe to or this? No. Here, yeah, right here, right here, right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Click on one of those. Yeah, I did that before and there wasn't any content in here. Yet. Oh, and are those ones just their thumbnails? I'm guessing. Okay. Uh, but what I'm wondering here, and let's uh let's check I this out. I wonder if you can go to the funnel hacker TV links. Oh no, I'm clicking on those, nothing happens. Yeah, they don't have the, it just doesn't seem like they're linked yet to anything. Yeah. I was just wondering if this was. Oh, and I broke it. <laughs> What'd you break? <laughs> uh, if you just start clicking around on that navigation scheme, it'll break. Oh, on this navigation over here? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, they're still working on it. But what I was wondering is if this was universal, um, that or the, oh, it is. Let me see. Now that's this universal section up right. top there. Um, I was wondering if this is universal, so you didn't have to put it in every single time. But I wonder I think, if that is a blog, like uh, in the blog. Like I, I'm imagining for putting in your blog content, there's going to be a, a specific area in your back end. And I wonder if there's almost like a, a menu builder that's specific for the blog, kind of like how it works in WordPress, right? Where you've got your you've got your menu, your navigation builder that you just set up once. So maybe it's like, it's not universal, but it kind of is like, it's not a universal element, but it's going to just the way that you set it up in the settings is going to make it show up that way. in all of your blog pages specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm when they originally showed, showed it at funnel hacking live, it basically was a WordPress clone, the editor, everything, basically looked exactly like wordpress but russell did make a comment one day about you know he he saw that and he goes well i don't want to be wordpress i want people to be able to use the click funnels editor to be yeah. able to build out these pages to be able to build out their blog posts and so Which what's it gonna like, what's it gonna yeah, look like now we have no idea with. yeah yeah, yeah you got the click funnels editor give it to us so that we can use it to build our blog posts with it Right. Because then yeah. you can make your blog post look like anything you want, including a sales page. Yeah. I got to say, just a, like a little side note shout out is that like even as big as ClickFunnels is, I mean, the fact that they released it with a lot of dead links, broken stuff, non-content, I mean, way to go in terms of like, you know, modeling what you preach of like launch imperfectly and just get it out there. I don't know that I would have that. I don't know that I would have that courage to be honest. Like, well, I gotta, it's also I really a good way to test. Them. Like, what's you that? Know, it's a good way to test. So you put that out to, to the public. You put out three or four pages to the public, and you let people start clicking on things and see what breaks. I mean, do, for do all you we think know, that there's probably a lot of people in here. Like, do you think there's a lot of traffic on this? I don't know. We're here. They don't market marketing secrets. Like a lot of times when I. So like when I'm describing hubs to people and I pull up marketing secrets, people have no idea that that's actually a thing, right? Like they don't drive any traffic to it. I don't it's 100%, I think, just SEO organic stumble upon. You know, how I did, never how did we all discover it? Up 
if you actually look up Russell Brunson, um, uh, and this could be, I, I need to probably go into an incognito mode to run a more accurate test, but this isn't the first thing that pops up. His mm-hmm. old one, the russellbrunson.com one comes up. Like well, it's that would make a sense. ways down before you actually get to this page. Well, I was going to... Which again, proves my point in terms of the SEO. <laughs> but that's a... Well, that's it's a new too. Doesn't it take some time? Mark, I don't know. isn't new. The... Okay, what was what was at marketingsecrets.com before... It, it was exactly like they've added a crap ton more content, but it was this, it was his hub. It was his hub, but it was on WordPress. That yeah. That's the one that Mike and okay. AJ did. So when yeah, you yeah. are moving platforms though, does it take time for the, the spiders and like Google and everything to like update like and, and crawl and do all the things that it needs to do and like bring it up higher in, in the searching and the ranks? Like, doesn't that take some time? It's not like well, an immediate. I don't know. It right. depends. Know. It really is going to depend on the links. If you use exactly the same link to you, so your old WordPress, you got a blog post over here. If you have the exact same link over to your new one, it shouldn't change anything. I mean, that should already exist in the um, whatever they call okay. it, the Google's database. Um, but if you change all of your all your links, then everything has to be redone. Which it's the but again, same but again, Google Google basically searches the web web instantaneously. So uh, with the caffeine update ten years ago, I mean they basically index everything, you know, like that. So yeah, mm-hmm. as soon as you put it up, it's it's indexed. Especially like if you got a site that's been around for a while. Okay, so as long as the links are still the same as they were, it should be as it as if nothing and, there, and there's a way i forget in wordpress that when you move stuff or change it or something there's a way to forward those those links but they did take down the old site mm-hmm. so maybe not because well certainly the site might might the site might still be there but it's not there with the same domain because they use the domain yeah, for the new right, one so right. uh, from that standpoint it's gone yeah interesting all right Anything else that we have? I think we could probably go noticed. on forever. Let's see. Does anybody have on, any on the content yet? hub specifically? <laughs> yeah, we got Ivy, we got Ben. Um, I think, and if you guys are catching on the replay too, feel free to pop in questions. We're watching the, the comments. Yeah. I think uh, Dan, it'll be interesting to see, like you said, how are we going to be able to use the blog feature? Is it going to use the same editor that we all know and love? Or is it going to be totally a separate thing? Because I'm um, looking at this and I'm like, oh man, I would totally like change the formatting of that post and <laughs> I would make it look a little bit different so that it's more readable. Um, right. And I know that's like, that can be done anywhere, but but the, you brought up the point of like, you can even turn your blog post into a sales page. Um, so yes. it'll be interesting to see what they what they give us. And I'm really, I think the things I'm most excited about in seeing this is the indexability features and how far that extends, the user experience emoticon feature and what's all included in that. And if they are using Discuss, if that's an add-on pay to play or if it's included and what's the management system of that. Um, those three things, at least from the blog standpoint, are the things I am the most interested in as yeah. they release it. Yeah, because I mean, those are things that I mean, we can you can build a blog on yeah. 1.0 if you really wanted to, <laughs> but you're, you don't have those team. features that you just mentioned, Andrea. So those are going to be like the unique things um, yeah. that is of, of what you could do now and what you can't. I mean, I'm just speaking in circles, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like you can go and build this if you want, but those are like what sets it aside from being just pages to being a blog are yes. those features. And then of course, like you said, the searchability and the indexing and being able to actually have a search function that that works, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the nice thing is if nothing else, it's all going to be in-house in one bit of software where you can interlink between everything very easily. And what is, what is the real, real, best part about this blog inside of ClickFunnels? 
So you don't have to use WordPress. Yes. <laughs> Continue to, yeah. I mean, what did the guys from Tucson say at, uh, or Russell said they had said at uh, Funnel Hacking Live is that we use WordPress because it's the least worst option. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, again, anybody who's used WordPress, I mean, there are some people who love it. And I love it too. I mean, I, I think it is great, but the dealing with the plugins and the hosting and you spend all day long fixing your broken plugins that are conflicting with shit and you, you don't have any time to do any marketing because you're building the site all day long. Yep. Yep. And then the like getting stuck in between two plugin companies and a theme company that are all pointing the finger at each other and you're well, stuck then in the one, middle. And then like... one updates or your or you have your theme update or your template mm -hmm. or whatever and then all of a sudden it's not working with stuff. Yeah. And that was always the biggest biggest hassle and and sure I mean um ClickFunnels 1.0 yeah there's bugs every day but I'll tell you it's for me it's still 10 times easier to work with than WordPress ever was. Two hands up, yes. Yep, yep, yep for sure. And, and WordPress was good for its time, right? I really just think that we're moving into an era now where, you know, that whole like websites are dead concept, I think philosophically and strategically is true, right? Um, I think it's not a, everything that people think it means, but, um, but yeah, I just, I think we're moving into a new era of the funnel experience, you know, for, with everything really. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, the only last thing I was going to say is it yeah. will be curious to see once we get in there is can we like something like this, build this as a universal section yes. and be able to just drop it in there. Now I can definitely see, uh, cause you know, you think section wide, but there's no reason why the little bit of CSS turn that thing sideways, drop all the links down in a row like that and just skinny it up and stick it in there. And, um, oh, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, but, that would be amazing. Yeah. Great, 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 great. We'll, we'll see Let's what happens that. once we get there. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. See I hope what that they works. give us first. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, we will wrap it up then. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, we will be back. Oh, wait, we will not be back next week. We won't. <laughs> Andrea and I will be oh, yeah, that's right. at we an event. Not. So yes. Oh, we you got your slumber party next week. It's not a slumber party. <laughs> okay. It is a magic in the sunroom. <laughs> we are attending. Yeah, we are attending an event. So we will not be live because we will. I bet there's like zero time to even like get in, especially on that Friday. So um, Dan, you'll you can feel free to drop in if you want to, but you don't have to do that either. So guys, we'll I'm, at least I'm sure be... my voice will be working fine then. It's only been like this for a month and a half. So. Yeah, we're almost back to like normal. You sound pretty thing. normal. Almost. Yeah, almost. Just, goes, almost, just yeah. cuts out a little bit. Okay, so we'll be back in two weeks for sure, and I'm sure we will either be diving more into what we haven't even covered for this funnel hub, um, or we might have something new that pops up that we can talk about. Yeah. Cross fingers. Maybe. Cross fingers. <laughs> Crossing our fingers. Um, because then we're going, that's going into March, right? Yeah. It's going yeah, into it's March. Almost March already. The magic, the magic end of quarter one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching or listening. <laughs> Bye guys.